no strangers are we here at Classic Motor Cars for the rare and unusual, but even by our standards, this is a particularly special car. So this is a 1936 long chassis Tourer by Squire Motors. One and a half litres, supercharged, bodywork by Renala, and uh, built by Squire down at their factory near Henley on Thames. So Squire was a very uh, interesting character. He was only 21 when he formed Squire Motors after a short apprenticeship with Bentley. And together with some uh, aristocratic uh, friends of his, he set up Squire Motors and uh, they produced seven cars in total in period. And this is one of only two long chassis cars that they built. So Adrian Squire, he started designing cars when he was 14, believe it or not. I think he was a bit of a child prodigy. And uh, when I say designing cars, he certainly wasn't uh, simply uh, sort of sketching in the back of his school notebook. Um, he formed uh, Squire Motors when he was 21. And uh, by all accounts, he did a lot of the engineering on this car. And it is very, very finely engineered. Uh, it would stand up technically against anything in its, uh, of its time. Um, there's some very, very fine engineering detail on this car. And uh, certainly when you look at the technical specification, uh, twin overhead uh, camshaft engine, the supercharger, um, and uh, the four speed Wilson pre-selector gearbox, um, really technically advanced. There's, no, there's absolutely no taking that away from, the, from uh, the design. When you drive this car, I have to say, of all the pre-war cars that I've driven, um, it's up there with the best. Uh, I would say this car drives and handles and certainly brakes as well or better really than anything else uh, of, it, of its uh, day. So all of that technical sophistication came at a price and uh, certainly the development work in order to get that technology to gel together and work as well as it does in this particular car certainly would have taken uh, an enormous amount of time and uh, road testing and engineering. So this car, new, uh, in long chassis drop head configuration as this car is, £1,350. So roughly the same price as the equivalent Bugatti um, or Alfa Romeo, twice the price of uh, uh, the Aston Martins of the time. So a very expensive uh, car and it probably comes as no surprise that not very many cars were sold. In fact, only seven in total were built. And as I think I mentioned earlier, this is uh, one of only two long chassis variants. Now, I mentioned earlier on, a Wilson pre-selector four-speed gearbox, and there's the control uh, for it. And uh, I've got to say, it makes the car a joy to drive. I mean, basically you can select the next gear well before you need it, and all you do is step on the clutch momentarily and it changes gear. So compared to most gearboxes of the time, uh, early MOS gearboxes or uh, other sort of um, crash gearboxes with no, uh, no synchromesh, uh, really improves the way the car drives uh, and you can really extract uh, you can really extract some more performance out of out of the car uh, with that and that this uh, particular system is also used in some uh, racing cars of the time so ERAs use this particular system so further expense no doubt went into the development and the uh, engineering of the power unit so Four cylinder, 1500 cc, twin overhead camshaft, hemispherical combustion chambers. The engine actually built by British Anzani, but I suspect there was a lot of further development went into uh, making it uh, work as well as it does in this car. Uh, supercharged, David Brown roots type supercharger down there. So David Brown of later Aston Martin fame and uh, fueling via SU Carburetor, as with uh, many British cars of the era. So 110 horsepower at five and a half thousand RPM, uh, supposedly 40 horsepower more than the normally aspirated uh, ver version. Um, I've got to say it's a little jewel of an engine. Very smooth, there's a little background scream from the supercharger, uh, very evocative when you drive the car, uh, you know the sound and the way it delivers its power uh, is uh, it's just a joy to drive, uh, a real jewel of an engine. Now, Adrian Squire also paid more than uh, passing attention to the brakes on this car. So the mechanical operating system uh, was of his own design. Uh, so twin shoes in a 15 and a half inch drum. So huge, huge drum. 
uh, and they are hydraulically operated by uh, Lockheed Hydraulics on all four wheels. So for a car of 1936, very advanced indeed. And by all accounts, uh, this car could stop from 30 miles an hour in less than 10 meters, which I think must have given the tires of the day, uh, you know, quite a, uh, quite a challenge for the tires of the day. So uh, impressive brakes and certainly today driving the car on the road, very firm brake pedal and uh, the brakes are particularly good for a pre-war car. They're excellent. So the first owner of this car was Val Zethrin. So uh, Val, uh, quite a famous uh, motorsport competitor and indeed he campaigned this car. Um, the first outing being the 1936 REC Rally. Uh, now when Val was uh, interviewed uh, in the 1960s, uh, he spoke about this car. He said it had uh, excellent road holding. He said that the uh, long chassis cars were better than the short chassis cars. And he said that the brakes were magnificent and it was one of the safest cars he had driven in period. Well, here we are on the other side of the engine. So we can see the other side of the David Brown supercharger and all of the intake track there with the uh, beautiful uh, cast cooling fins on it. A couple of pop-off valves there just to protect everything from uh, backfires. You've obviously got uh, a lot of compressed air fuel uh, charge inside that uh, manifold at about 5 psi boost so uh, it doesn't take much to uh, to ignite that and uh, the, uh, the pop-off fouls are a good safety feature. Other features in here big oil tank in period that was connected to the sump via a uh, float chamber type mechanism and also it lubricated all of the chassis points uh, around the car and uh, the dynamo stroke starter drives uh, directly onto the crankshaft through a uh, drive shaft there at the front and uh, the uh, the brochure of the time makes uh, quite a big deal of the fact that the uh, starter motor is silent in operation. So uh, anyway, there we are. And we've got a copy of that brochure, an original copy of that brochure, which is a lovely thing to have. So this is ch chassis 1501. It's uh, the fourth car that uh, Squire built and the first long chassis car. So after Val's Etherin, the car passed through a number of hands. And as you'd expect with a car this calibre, all of that history right up to the present day has been very carefully documented and we have all of that documentary uh, uh, evidence here. I won't go too far into that because uh, it would just take too long. But what I will mention is the restoration of the car, which was started here in 2011. Uh, the car was brought here by its current owner and we were asked to restore the car back to its original specification. So the bodywork had been modified for racing, uh, as happened to uh, so many pre-war cars, uh, but we restored it all back to its original factory specification, original colors, original trim, and largely the original mechanical layout. So, uh, and all of that work has obviously been very, very carefully documented. So I think it's time to try and give you an impression of how the car drives. Uh, I drove it two or three days ago, um, so uh, take a look at uh, take a look at this video. Uh, hopefully, give you a good impression of what it is to drive. Uh, it's a very evocative thing, I've got to say. Um, the noise of the supercharger, um, as with any pre pre war car of note, it's a fabulous thing to have on the road anyway. But combined with uh, the technical sophistication, you know, brakes that work, uh, the car steers, you know very well for a car of its period it steers very well indeed um, it is uh, it's a fantastic thing on the road so take a look at this video and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, a little bit more about the car after you've seen it we are then engine running in the cockpit let's see what she drives like so uh, wilson uh, four speed pitch lifting gearbox so uh, that first gear it the handbrake clutch up we're off just like any uh, any other manual car Very, very easy to drive. It's 
quite sophisticated, uh, certainly for 1936. Uh, I guess it's the forerunner of a modern uh, sequential gearbox, so you find on a rally car, for instance. So, uh, quite a clever thing. There's fourth, and then the same going down the box. There's third. four indicators on this car so uh, they're quite a nice uh Hopefully that gave you an impression of what it, what it is to drive this car. Uh, absolutely amazing thing. It's as good as anything else pre-war that I've ever driven. I would say it's up there with uh, SS hundreds. Uh, in fact, it's lighter. It's got a little bit more space. Uh, it's easier to drive. The road holding, I would say, is better, and the brakes are definitely superior. Just to try and give you some sort of comparison. It's certainly less cramped than period Aston Martins of the day, and. Uh, it is just a, it's just a fabulous thing, absolutely fabulous thing. So part of the joy of owning a car like this um, is the invitations, or the invitations and the opportunities that come to you as the owner to take part in some of the world's greatest motoring events. Now this car has already been featured very heavily on the international concourse scene, and I suspect that those invitations would carry on flooding in for the new owner. So there we are, 1936, long chassis, one and a half litre, supercharged Squire Tourer, body by Renala, one of only two long chassis tourers that Squire built, one of only seven cars that were built in period. So a rare car by anybody's standards and uh, certainly amongst uh, British sports cars of the, of the time, um, one of the rarest. Technically sophisticated, a technical tour de force, I would, I would go as far as saying. Uh, a very special thing indeed. If you're interested in this car, please give us a call 01 746 765 804 
or we can be contacted on email at mail at classic-motor-cars.co.uk. I hope you found the video useful and if you have any questions just give us a call or drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much.